Hello everyone, I'm Ankit and you're watching Study IQIS English. Now, India is looking to amend its nuclear energy laws. But why is India looking to amend its nuclear energy laws? There is must be some reason, right? We'll find that one out in our today's video. Now, the notes that I will be using in this session, in case if you want to download them, you can go to this particular Telegram channel, ATS Live. And while you're at it downloading the notes, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel also. So, let us start by understanding what is going to happen or why it is going to happen. First, India is going to amend two laws which pertains to atomic energy as well as the civil nuclear damage laws. And this is looking to be done by the government in the upcoming winter session of the parliament. Now, these changes or through these changes, government wants to align India laws with the legal provisions that exist globally so that it would address the existing investor concerns regarding it and it would also open up India's civil nuclear energy sector to the private players. Okay, so this is the ultimate aim of the government. Now, let us understand what are the laws we are going to talk about and what kind of amendments we can expect in the upcoming winter session of the parliament. First amendment would be done to the Atomic Energy Act of 1962. Now, this Atomic Energy Act regulates who can operate the nuclear power plants in the country. Presently, it is only the central government and its PSUs that can operate the civil nuclear power plants in India. And currently, it is only the National Nuclear Power Corporation of India, NPCIL, that can operate these nuclear plants. And we have seen NPCIL has gotten into JVs with another PSUs of government of India, for example, like NTPC, to start a nuclear power plant. So, the moot point of my today's discussion is only central government and PSUs can operate a nuclear power plant, whereas on the other hand, state government and the private players according to the existing atomic energy act they can't operate nuclear laws now india is looking to open up its civil nuclear energy sector to private players so that the private players can manage and operate a nuclear power plant and they can also invest in projects which are projects related to small modular reactors now, small modular reactors are smaller nuclear reactors which can be used for a specific industrial purposes. And the point of designing these nuclear powers so that they would make nuclear energy more easily available, right? So, this is the first amendment that the government has proposed. Now, let us talk about the second act which the government is looking to amend. And this act is the Civil Liability for Nuclear Damage Act 2010. Now, this act, it provides a way or a mechanism so that in case of a nuclear accident, there should be a way to compensate the victims of this nuclear accident. Now, foreign suppliers of nuclear energy equipment, they are afraid of this particular clause. You know why? This clause says that or this act says that in case of a future nuclear accident, the liability to compensate the victims of this nuclear accident rests with operator. But in another case, it also goes to the supplier of the nuclear energy equipment. And this is through the right of recourse which is provided in the act. So, in case of a future nuclear accident, not just the operator of the nuclear power plant is liable to pay the damages, but it is also the supplier of the equipments, most of which are foreign countries, companies, right? So, that is why they have flagged this as a in this incentive to invest in India's nuclear sector. Now, these foreign vendors, they fear that in case of a future nuclear accident, which is very thin by the way, but theoretically possible, these companies would have to spend a lot of money in order to compensate the victims. So, the government is looking to amend certain provisions for that it would effectively cap the liability of equipment vendors and this would also limit the monetary exposure these equipment suppliers would be liable to in order for a nuclear accident to happen. And they would also limit the time frame within which you can demand the compensations from these foreign players. So, this is the second amendment that the government is looking to do in the Civil Liability for Nuclear Damages Act 2010. Now, you must be thinking why government is looking to make such amendments. I'll come to that. Don't worry. Let us first understand how much nuclear energy or how much total energy in India is generated to nuclear power plants. Now, India presently has 24 nuclear reactors or whose cumulative power generation capacity is about 8.78 gigawatts and an additional 6.6 .6 gigawatts in the is in the pipeline by installation and operations of a new nuclear power plant. 
Now, all these nuclear power plants currently in India are operated by NPCIL or central government PSUs. Now, the government has come up with a proposal that it wants to increase the use of nuclear energy in overall power generation. The government has set a target that by the year 2047, where India achieves its 100 years of independence, India should be able to generate as much as 100 gigawatts by using the nuclear power capacity. So, all in all, government wants to increase the use of nuclear power capacity. And in this case, we can't solely rely on government companies or public companies. We also have to give this opportunity to state governments who also can look to in install nuclear power as well as to private players who can install a normal nuclear power plant or even a smaller small modular reactors. So, this is the first requirement. We want to scale up the use of nuclear power plant and for that we need private sectors help also. The second reason is climate based. Now, you need to understand in its Paris Agreement, India gave certain promises called as NDCs or nationally determined contributions. And in this nationally determined contributions, India made a promise to generate as much as 500 gigawatts of electricity by using non fossil fuel based sources. So, we have multiple options we can rely on in order to generate those 500 gigawatts of power. We can generate it through solar energy or through wind energy or through nuclear energy, right? But you need to understand solar and wind energy has a very big problem. This problem is called as intermittency because solar and wind energy, they are not available 24 seven because of the unavailability of uh, sun or the non-flowing of wind. So, because of this intermittency problem, as these energy sources are not available 24 seven, you need some kind of a power generation method, which would provide you the base load. Base load is the minimum amount of load that you need to give it to the power transmission so that your energy sector can survive. And presently, this need is taken care of by coal based thermal power plant, right? But as government is looking to make or have a cleaner source of power generation, then in that case, the base load can be provided by the nuclear source of energy because like coal power plant, it is stable. But unlike coal power plant, it is not polluting at all, right? So, this is the second requirement why we are going up with the amendment so that more players can start nuclear power plant and we can depend on nuclear energy to provide base load, which is a cleaner source of fuel as compared to the coal based power plant, okay? So, this is what or this is how India benefits from this. Now, before solving the PYQs, which appeared in the prelims on the same topic that we discussed today, you need to understand few important stuff. Now, the point that I picked up, it relates to governance as well as from science and tech perspective where we deal with power plants. Now, if you have to understand all the other topics, not just from science and tech perspective, but all the other subjects which are there in UPSC exam, you have one very good option. And this good option comes in form of resolution plus batches. Now, in resolution plus batches, which are available for students who are looking to give exam in the year 2027 or in 2028, if you take admissions right now, you will get the best deal possible. And this is a applicable only up till 30th of November. To do that, just go to our website, click on the course that you want 2027 or 2028. And before making the payment, apply the code ATS Live. This code helps you fetch maximum discounts on all the courses, not on the re just the resolution batches, but also on option subjects. So learn to thrive by using the code ATS Live. Now let us come back to the question that appeared in 2018. In Indian context, what is the implication of ratifying additional protocol with the IAEA, that is the in International Energy Atomic Energy Agency? Now India signed this additional protocol with IAEA as a compulsion of the Indo-US civil nuclear deal. Now, in this deal, India agreed to let IAEA inspectors inspect its civilian nuclear power plant. And on the other hand, the military nuclear power plants, which India uses for defense purposes, they are out of the purview of IAEA's inspection. So, the civil nuclear reactor, which comes under IAEA safeguard, is the right answer to this question, option A. Now, let us take up another question that appeared in 2020. In India, why are some nuclear reactors kept under IA safeguards while others are not? Now, you will be able to solve this question based on the discussion we had in the earlier question. Do please, please let me know the correct answer to this question in the comment section and the ones who answer it correctly will get a thumbs up from my side. Also, what do you feel? Do let me know is private sector participation in India's nuclear sector good or bad for India? 
please do let me know what do you feel about this issue in the comment section and i will respond to each and every of your comments this is all from my side for today if you want to download the notes you can go to this telegram channel and if you have troubles locating it this is the qr code you can scan as well so this is all from my side please have a very good day